Okay, guys. Hello, welcome to our meeting for today. Today is uh, November 20. I'm recording this video November 20, but this is being played today, November 22, 2021. Okay, I just want to say sorry for uh, being unable to, yeah, for being not around today for some equally important task at my office. So, uh, hence, I did this video recording of our lesson. Okay, before we formally, I mean, before we continue, I want to have our opening prayer. So, let's have an opening prayer and I'm going to share a screen from YouTube. And I hope you also pray with me. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our loving Father, we praise and glorify your name each day. We thank you for all the blessings, especially the gift of life you showered us. So, uh, once again, welcome to our meeting. And today, we're going to discuss our topic, flowchart. Okay? So, actually, uh, the beginning of our final term, uh, well, the lesson about algorithms and flowchart started last midterms. And we did some algorithms during the midterm period. That's why um, I hope you already had an idea how are we going to translate later on these algorithms into our flowchart. So as defined, uh, I'm going to share first my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I am. I'm sharing my screen right now and that's not supposed to be the screen I, I would share and it's all about oops this PowerPoint okay so let me play that yeah uh, this final term uh, begins with our algorithms and flowchart and this is based on the reference introduction to computer concepts by Juni Pilapil Laput, a book at our library from the library, Filipiniana section, because it is a Filipino author. So I want you guys to you know uh, visit our campus, especially we are now allowed to. Well, I hope that the limited face-to-face -face of uh, classes will be implemented very soon. I, uh, I know that our university doing so much in order for us to go back and see our campus all right go back here in our campus okay so from this reference we're going to discuss lesson 22 to 26 algorithms and flowcharts yeah algorithms and flowcharts drawing flowcharts loops and counters loops and trailers 
and loops and accumulators. And uh, there will still be another lesson. Um, again, this is what? I want to say that. Okay, so let's proceed with our algorithms and flowchart. So this will be the summary. Again, we're done with flowchart. Ah, well, I, I about, I'm about to say, I was about to say that the lessons that I'm going to discuss right now will be a supplement. Will be additional, you know, discussion on yeah, flowcharts since the topic have been uploaded to your LMS already. I hope, I hope that you have started reading the lessons in our LMS. So the flow of discussion, my flow, will be different from the topics. But again, you will see uh, similarities of the topics. So you might see some topics in our LMS that may not be here, but you will be seeing some topics that may be related to those in the LMS. So just a quick definition of algorithms. This is the list of instructions for carrying out some process step by step. Right, so as you know, the recipe in a cookbook lists instructions how to cook a certain recipe. Right, for example, pinakbet. And you will notice that there are certain steps to follow and that will if you if you complete the process uh, you finish or you accomplish the task okay so that is uh, the algorithms of cooking a certain recipe okay, another example is a choreography for a classical ballet paano ba, paano ba natin paggalawin yung mga paa kamay and so on and so forth so ganun din sa buhay natin guys every morning we wake up actually there is a question here what is your algorithms upon waking up in the morning. Ano ba yung ginagawa natin? Pagkagising natin, tayo ba ay tumatayo kagad? Or nag-iinat-inat muna? O inat-inat? So, those are examples of algorithms. Um, another example is the process of enrollment in the university. How did you enroll? The first step, you go to your portal, perhaps. You check your subjects to enroll. Well, you are first year, so uh, this coming second sem, you will learn that you know you will be uh, you will be doing the process of enrollment. So you will see there. Ano ba yung step one? Pupunta ka sa uh, academic dean and so on and so forth. Pero online na tayo. Makikita naman natin yung instruction. Um, isa sa pinakamahirap gawin ng mga bata, ng mga estudyante ng maraming estudyante ay magbasa ng instruction. So, isa yun sa sana ay huwag niyong kakalimutan, guys. Ha? Importante yung pagbabasa ng instruction. Okay, um, similar to our computer, guys, we have a lot of instructions that you know our processor is calculation, calculating. There are millions of steps. For example, how are you going? When you press the Windows key from the keyboard and it displays the, the start menu, there is a certain procedure that our computer has done. And this procedure is a computation of, you know, binary addition, multiplication, arithmetic, and uh, logical operations. Okay, so recall our parts of computer system. Uh, we have our microprocessor, and in the microprocessor, there are Two components or major uh, parts, which is the ALU, the arithmetic and logic unit, which is responsible for computing arithmetic problems, logical problems. So, ganon yung ginagawa ng ating computer. Million of instructions. Now, um, we proceed to definition of flowcharts. Flowchart is of course uh, a representation of the different steps and procedures uh, from our algorithm. So let's take our algorithms and we move now these steps into the flowchart. We will just use sim we will just use symbols to represent this sequence, logical sequence, 
Okay? So, these are the combination of steps um, and operations. And of course, in the flowchart, we are using labeled geometrical symbols. And I will show you that one later on. And so, this is now the visual representation of the algorithms that we have listed earlier. Um, for example, the noodles. When you buy noodles from the grocery store, you see some instructions and they put figure how to cook. <laughs> so something like that. There is a visual representation of the procedure. Dito naman sa flowchart natin, uh, ganun din, uh, gumamit lang tayo ng geometrical symbols. Because each geometrical symbol has meaning. Okay? And they are being interconnected to provide a pictorial representation of a data processing procedure. So, kailangan natin ng lines. And these lines will connect each symbol from one symbol to another to indicate that there is a jump of step from this step to the next step. So, makikita natin na itong uh, marami kasi tayong figures dito, symbols, geometrical symbols na Pwedeng, pwedeng sabihin natin na linear lang yung flow ng operation, pwedeng multiple and so on, maraming direction na pupuntahan. And these are represent uh, these are shown uh, by uh, these are indicated by these lines. By the way, flowchart guys is very important especially for beginners, programmer just like you. Um, this will be helpful for us to understand how are we going to program a certain you know a process Let's say for example your algorithms last time converting uh, converting celsius to fahrenheit ba? so ano ba yung step natin so first step uh, get the value of celsius then convert now the Celsius to Fahrenheit by using the formula and then display the value in Fahrenheit. So that is a very uh, uh, simple example of flowchart and it will be represented later on by symbols. Of course, flowcharts will be used later on when you grow, uh, when you reach your fourth year and uh, when you reach your thesis making, this flowchart is a method of uh, presenting your study. Paano ba yung magiging tapo for electrical engineering? Um, you, you will be creating systems for C project. You're going to develop perhaps uh, uh, project buildings. You're going to propose buildings. And how are you going to accomplish the building? Yeah? So meron kayong first step. You gather, for example, materials. And then do some calculations and so on and so forth. And then the building is built. Ganun sa electrical, sa computer engineering, ganun din, electronics. Yung mga system na ginagamit natin. So, ang ganda kasi makita na, ah, okay, ah, itong symbol na to, meaning meron tayong process na tatanggapin. Yung mga sensor natin, for example, these sensors are uh, getting, you know, getting signals. It, it, they receive signals Meaning, if they get to receive signals from external environment, meaning there are some inputs that are being received by that uh, sensor. And then it will process that signal and then provide an output. Okay. So, oops. Hold on. Uh, meron kasi tayo rito. Actually... <laughs> Uh, Nag-record ulit ako kasi hindi ko masyadong na <clears throat> uh, may problema sa recording ko kanina kaya medyo wait lang ha. Okay. Stop sharing ko muna. <clears throat> Manda tayo dun sa oops files. Sa file pala. So, gumawa ako ng ano guys eh, ng PowerPoint. Ang problema ko, hindi nag-record yung screen. Kaya nagre-record ulit ako ngayon. Yun ang problema. 
Okay, nag-record uh, na ako kanina eh. Okay, sige. Um, in the flowchart, will you notice that we're going to have here advantages? Okay, may advantage to, syempre. Um, meron ding limitation. Ano nga bang advantages ng mga ano natin, flowchart natin? Wait lang. Oops, 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 oops. Wait lang guys, ha? At kasi siya na save. Okay, wait lang. Hindi ko siya naalis kanina. Okay, yan. Pano tayo dito? Okay, balik na tayo. Ating screen. Share screen. Entire screen. Okay. Click natin yun. Oh, yeah. uh, we have here the advantages of flowcharts. Let's do it very quickly. It's language dependent. Okay. So if you, whatever you understand, uh, use, use it because for you to understand the flowchart, you don't have to study some programming language to implement a flowchart. Okay. Enforcement of focus to significant matters over less significant ones because the symbols, each symbol represents, you know, a specific uh, step or part of the process. Provides alternative to narrative description. Sometimes we hate reading a lot of, you know, procedures. But if we get figures, Ah, okay. Uh, it's sometimes some some people are visual people. They they rather uh, view the image instead of read, right? And then of course it's easier to understand. I will show you later on. All right. Some limitations we have here, of course, uh, when we have flowchart, we cannot. Uh, it cannot be accepted by computer. We still have to translate it into codes. And then it cannot be viewed as natural way of communication. So meaning when you write a letter, for example, you don't use flowchart. All right. Um, uh, this is not, you know, the... And, uh, okay. Next is uh, certain details often require long interconnections. Makikita natin later on yung mga symbols natin. Meron tayong interconnection na makikita natin from one figure to the next figure, minsan ang layo ng connection if only to represent the procedure or the idea of the flow. And does not convey why. It only shows how. Okay? Hindi, hindi na i-explain. Bakit ito, itong symbol na to connected dito? Hindi na i-explain yan. Ipapakita lang na itong symbol na to ay magagawa kung kukonekta siya dito sa symbol na yan. And of course, it don't it doesn't highlight important details. <clears throat> now we have two types: program flowchart and system flowchart. Well, the only difference is that system we have uh, input, we have their output. Okay? Of course, these are interconnections of hardware, software, and the personnel. How does the output is displayed? We receive input. We process the input and then it will give us an output. While for the program flowchart, well, uh, graphically describes it graphically describes logical operation and steps within a program. Um, also, sequence of execution to to form the transformation of data to produce needed output. Okay. Next. We have the different symbols. Symbols, we have um, oval. Oh, yeah. Let's recall our algorithm last time. The terminal symbol designates the beginning and the end of a program. So if you remember, we are always writing start at the beginning. And at the last, we, we are writing end or stop. Right? to indicate that that's the end and this is the beginning. So, meron tayong symbol para dyan. And you, we are using, ilalagay lang natin yan sa oval. And that is now the terminal symbol. 
O, input and output symbol, and that is parallelogram. Alam niyo siguro ang parallelogram. Yan. Uh, rhombus, parang rhombus lang yan. It represents an instruction to an input or an output device. So from our example, uh, the conversion of uh, Celsius and flowchart, you notice we need to get the value in Celsius. So we have to read from the keyboard. So these are the keywords, okay? Read, input, um, enter. So yun yung mga input natin. Okay? Pag nabasa na natin yung read or input, enter, it means input. So we are now using the parallelogram symbol. Now, on the other hand, ayan, in, read yan. On the other hand, we have output. Pag uh, display naman, display, show, um, print. So yung mga ganun, print. Pag nakakita na tayo ng ganyan, kasi ipiprint yan, eh, ipiprint sa screen, meaning that is an output. So we are using the parallelogram symbol. So, yan. And the next symbol, we're done with that, is processing symbol. So, we are going to represent arithmetic, assignment, comparison in a rectangle. So, if you want to write the formula, that is rectangle. That is a process of converting Celsius into Fahrenheit. So that is a process, arithmetic process, assignment process. If you're equating X to Y, that is a process. So you, you're going to use the rectangle or processing symbol. Um, next, decision symbol, diamond. So if you notice, the symbol gives us, if this is the entry, minsan, meron tayong <clears throat> pwedeng uh, pagpilian eh. Sama tayo pupunta. Are you on to this location? To this one, or going down. So that is now the decision symbol. If you're going to, if you're, for example, answer, if you're going to answer true or false, so decision yan. Ano ba? True ba or false? So gagamit ka ng decision symbol. Well, some uh, unused, well, we'll not be using this so much. The preparation symbol, the predefined symbol. Okay, so ito hexagon yan. Medyo ano na kasi ito. Uh, pagka sobrang detailed na talaga nung flowchart natin at yung program natin, saka siguro natin ito magagamit. But for so far, with the examples that uh, we're going to give you, hindi masyado. But the definition is there. That might come out in one of your assessments. Let's proceed to on-page connector. The name itself, on-page connector, if, for example, you're now uh, you're going the sim, you're writing the symbols, for example, and uh, the space is not enough. There's an there's still a space here, in this area. Uh, instead of write writing very long lines, tagamit na tayo ng small circle. Again, don't worry. I'm going to show examples later. On. Pagka off page connector naman yung mga hindi kasha sa isang page. Kailangan natin ng extra page to continue the flow. So we're going to use a small pentagon. Yung kanina, small circle. Ito, small pentagon. Um, the flow direction indicator or the arrowhead, ito mo yan. yan. Pwedeng ganyan. Pwedeng ganyan. Arrowhead, ito guys. Ha? So shows the direction. Para hindi natin saan ba pupunta from this point to that point. So, indicated by the direction. And they are using the flow line as well. Uh, please take note. Uh, ano ba tong ibig sabihin nito? For example, from the start, we're going to have input. So, yan. Mayroon tayong read. Then, mayroon tayong ipaprocess. Rectangle. Rectangle yan. And then, output. And then, end. Tapos na. So, these lines here, Ayan. Kung mapapansin nyo, pababa yan. Kaya may arrowhead yan. Pababa. Ganun din kapag ka, uh, ganito, going to the left. I mean, from left to right. And then process. And then terminal. Okay. So, lalagyan din natin ng arrowhead. Para hindi natin ma... Para hindi tayo ma-confuse kung ano ba, paano ba yung flow natin. Okay. 
well some very small detail lang naman yun. But please take note that in flow lines, the arrow heads, in practice, uh, it is required to write or to put arrow heads okay, if the symbol is from right to left. I mean, the flow chart is going right to left. So ito, right to left ba yan? Hindi. This is from left to right. Parang pag left to right kasi, pa, uh, uh, normal flow, okay? Magsisumula ka sa left, one, two, three, di ba? Ganun. Five. So, minsan hindi na natin nilalagyan ng arrowhead. Pero pagka right to left naman, meaning the first step starts at right and then the next is going to the left, kailangan natin lagyan ng arrowhead. Importante itong arrowhead dito. Okay? So, pag right, left to right, kahit wala na siyang arrowhead dito, okay lang. Hindi siya required. Ganun din kapag ka uh, magsisimula sa baba, pataas. So, bottom, going top. So, if that is the direction, kailangan natin lagyan ng arrowhead. Kasi hindi siya normal. Eh. Magsisimula sa baba, pataas. Medyo maguguluhan ka. So, kailangan mo ng arrowhead. Pagka magsisimula naman sa top, papunta sa baba, kahit hindi na natin lagyan ng arrowhead. Again, small details lang itong mga pa. And I will keep mentioning that one later on when we do some examples. Okay. So that ends our first lesson, the algorithms and flowchart. Um, we will continue with the next one, which is drawing flowchart. Okay, guys. So let's continue our discussion. And right now, we're discussing about how, well, the, the next lesson is... Drawing flowcharts, okay? Drawing flowcharts. Let's click this lesson number 23. And the summary of the topic or the lesson will be drawing flowcharts, some notations used in flowcharting, and some problems. Again, as I've said earlier, there are some examples in our LMS and you are feel free to study them. How did they come up with uh, you know, the flowchart? and uh, you know discuss uh, compare with my you know discussion okay well again as introduction of flowchart it's all about problem solving okay it's all about problem solving so let's have an example of a typical working days in the office you notice uh, i mean observe the flow lines and directions and the different symbols and how they are being how they were used in the flowchart so start again that is what is this symbol again terminal symbol that is oval and this is a flow line then go to work and then take a break so again this is an example of a typical working day in the office so you start working in the office you go to work you take a break and then, now, what symbol is this? Is it time to go home? So, diba? Decision symbol na yan. Is it time to go home? Yes. Go home. And then stop. Because it's already time to go home. But if no, yan, if no, is the boss looking? So there is another decision here. Is the boss looking? If, yeah. If, yeah, uh, if no, go to A. Where is A? There is A, meaning you're going to take a break. So loop lang do. Okay, so we are now using uh, on-page connector, small circle. And that is the boss looking. Yes, do some work. And then B, where's B? Is the boss looking? So parang paulit-ulit lang do. So, okay, I'm going to highlight. So start, you go to work, take a break. Well, this is a little bit of a joke, all right, example. You take a break and then you're going to check the time if it is time to go home. If yes, go home. And then that's the end. Kaya may stop na tayo dito. And if no, so this is yes. If it's not yet time to go home, meron ka bang next decision? Is the boss looking? So my decision ka na naman. 
Yes or no? If no, yan. You're going to the next step, which is A. Again, this A represents a connection from this point to this point. This is A. So if the boss lo is the boss looking no, then you take a break. I say the boss is not looking, and then is it time to go home? No. Is the boss looking? Yes. Do some work. And then B. So B. B. Mix up and connected yan dito. Okay. So B, B, is the boss looking? Pull it ulit, if the, Is the boss looking? Yes, do some work. Pag no, you take a break. And then until, until it stops, okay? When it's already time to go home. Oh, you notice the different symbol. Meron tayong terminal symbol, start and stop. Then process symbol, rectangle, process symbol. Decision symbol, dalawa. Meron tayong on-page connector. Yan, yung small circle. We also have these uh, flow lines with the arrowheads and flow lines without the arrowhead. Ito sinasabi natin kanina na kapag, um, kapag pababa, kahit wala na siyang arrow dito. Okay? Understood din eh. Kasi pababa yan. No need to put so many arrowhead. Pag uh, mula kaliwa papuntang kanan, hindi na rin kailangan. Di ba? Yan. Hindi na natin nilagyan ng arrowhead dito. Dito rin. Sa A, hindi na natin nilagyan ng arrowhead. But if the direction is from left to right, I mean from right going to the left, katulad dito, notice kailangan ng arrowhead dyan. Dito rin may arrowhead. Okay. So that's now a very simple example of flowchart. Let's proceed to the next. Now, the notations used in flowcharting. Please take note of the different notation. We use addition, a subtraction, multiplication, division. That's nor that, that's common, okay? This four are common. Exponentiation. So if you're going to write flowchart, uh, if you're going to put some exponentiation in the flowchart, we don't use... Uh, 2 raised to 2, small 2, no. In flowchart, it should be written as uh, 2, pwedeng as the long asterisk, 2. So, yan. Ang ibig sabihin nun, 2 raised to 2. Or 2, yung ating oh, parang opening bracket, another 2, yan. Or 2, then arrow pataas, 2. So these are the different ways of writing exponentiation. Okay. Now let's have the next. Okay. So okay. Oops. Voila. Uh, we have here uh, comparison, grouping, okay? Itong mga greater than, uh, equal to, uh, greater than symbol, yan. greater than equal, yeah, pwede yan, or GE, not equal, greater than GT, less than, equal, less than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, not equal, we have yes, no, and then end of file. And of course, we have here illustrative problem. Okay, so we are now uh, implementing flowchart. Uh, we are going to implement you know, uh, the flowchart with our example. Because with our algorithm, um, let's have this. The radius of a circle is equal to one unit. Draw a flowchart to compute the corresponding area of the circle and print out the value of the radius and the area. Okay, if that is a problem, we have this suitable algorithm for that problem. So number one, define the value of the radius. And pi, of course, pi is a constant. That is equal to 3.1416. Then step two, calculate the area of the circle given the the value of the radius and the pi. And of course, we're going to print out the radius and its corresponding area. 
So from this problem, we have the, we have derived the algorithm. So we're going to proceed with writing the flowchart. The start, lagi yan, and then r equals one. Then pi is equal to three point fourteen sixteen. Compute the area. Display the area or print r and area, and then the end. Okay, how come na ganito yung nangyari sa flowchart natin? Okay, the radius of a circle is equal to one unit. Yan. Na-identify sa problem. The radius is equal to one unit. We're going to draw a flowchart to compute for the corresponding area of the circle. How to compute for the area of the circle? Ito. Meron tayong formula dito. Area is equal to pi times r times r. Or pi pi times r raised to 2. Diba? Yun yung exponentiation natin kanina. And of course, we have defined the value of pi to be 3.1416. Okay, take note that um, we have to follow the procedure. We cannot compute the area. Okay, we cannot write the, the area without indicating the value of pi and the radius at the beginning. So kung mapapansin natin, makukompute ba natin yung area? Hindi natin pwedeng ilagay yung area dito sa simula without writing first the radius and the, the pi. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Ulitin natin, ganito yung flow eh. Kaya may algorithm na tayo. So we have to define first the value of the radius and the pi. Then calculate the area. And then print out the radius and the area. So paano naging, bakit ipiprint natin yung r tsaka area? That is the problem, guys. I mean, it is indicated in the problem. Print out the value of the radius and the area. Okay, so that is now the flowchart number one. Another example. <clears throat> okay, example number two. We're going to, uh, given the numbers A, B, and C, Ibig sabihin, meron kang numbers A, B, C. You draw a flowchart that would compute the sum, the average, and the product of these values. Okay? So given the, the numbers A, B, and C, draw a flowchart that would compute the sum, the average, and the product of these values. So what will be a suitable algorithm for that problem? I have number one, read in values of A, B, and C. So notice that we have here the keywords. Sinabi natin kanina dun sa flowchart symbol natin na may keyword tayo. If we have this keyword read in values, meaning you're going to get values from the keyboard. Because this ABC are variables. Wala siyang value. So para magkaroon siya ng value, kailangan natin lagyan using the keyboard by reading in values. It's like putting values of A, B, and C. Then next, determine the sum of the values. Compute the average by dividing the sum by 3. Then multiply the first value to the second and then by the third. Then print out the computed values. So this suitable algorithm, guys, represent the problem. Sabi kasi dito, given the numbers A, B, and C, you're going to draw a flowchart that will compute the sum, average, and the product. So we, we now have the flowchart. <coughs> Start. Read ABC. Okay, so I emphasize the keyword read because this is going to be input. That's why we use the uh, input-output symbol or the parallelogram symbol. Read ABC, meaning you get values of ABC. And then get the sum. Get the average, get the product, and then print the values, sum, average, product. And then that's the end. Okay. <clears throat> so that is now the second problem. Do you have any questions? Well, I cannot, I, cannot, I, I, I cannot see if you have questions right now, but we will get some hint later on. But uh, before that, Let's visit our LMS. Titignan natin kung ano ba yung LMS natin. Ano ba yung laman ng LMS natin pagdating sa flowchart? 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we have a flow chart. Pansin nyo ba yung iba't ibang kulay ng ating topic folders? I mean, arranged na siya. Green, blue, yellow, and the uh, final we have maroon. Okay, so na-define din yung symbol, advantages, operations. Na-indicate na rin yung mga operators. Mathematical operators, relational, logical, selection control statements, loop control statements, okay, and some example flowcharts, algorithm, and flow. okay. Anyway, these are just another example. So let's proceed. Let's proceed to the next. I'm still again. I will share my screen. <coughs> Yan, mga example lang to. So, example naman itong ginagawa natin. Oops. We proceed to the next lesson which is the loops and counters. <clears throat> we'll study the loops and counters. Or counters, problem, and steps in loop control. Um, here, guys, when we repeat some operation, we're actually doing a loop. Get, when do we see the loop? I mean, where can we experience this looping statement? Say, for example, um, um, you you are going to water the plant. Well, water the plant. So you fetch water from the faucet. Okay. The, the pail is full of water. After filling up the water, the, the pail with water, use it to water the plant. After consuming the water, you go fetch another pail of water and then use the water to water the plant. So, paulit ulit. That's repeating operation. So, parang may loop. Pabalik-balik ka. So, anong minsan? Uh, in real life, anong solution natin? Ay, bibili ka na lang ng host, di ba? Kakabit mo yung host sa... Sa gripo, and then punta ka na lang, gamitin mo yung host para hindi ka na pabalik-balik. So, yun yung solution nun. Pag real life problem, pinag-uusapan natin. And uh, until a certain condition is met, the loop will not stop. Di ba? For example, kailan matatapos yung pag-iigibo ng tubig? Kapag nadiligan mo na lahat. Di ba? Dito sa program natin, it will not stop until there is a certain condition. Loop terminating condition. Okay? And uh, of course, loops and counter. We're talking of loops and counter. Sometimes, we are counting how many times we repeat the operation. So, for example, ilang beses ka nag-igib? Pag nakalima na ako, matatapos ko na to. So, alam mo na kapag nakalimang igib ka ng balde ng tubig, matatapos na yung pagdidilig mo. So, minsan binibilang mo, ilan? Isa. Okay, babalik ka. Dalawa. Tatlo. Apat. Lima. So, binibilang mo, di ba? Yun yung counter na tinatawag natin. And please take note that in our program later on, all counters must be initialized. Okay? You please take note of that. All counters must be initialized. Okay, let's have an example. <coughs> The initial value of the radius of a circle is equal to one unit and each succeeding radius is one unit greater than the value before it. So we're talking of the initial value of the radius equal to one unit and each succeeding radius is one unit greater than the value before it. So ibig sabihin, meron tayong initial value ng radius at nadadagdagan siya ng one unit. Okay? One unit. Draw a flowchart to compute the area of a of circle starting with radius equals 1 up to radius equals 5. And then print out each, each radius and the corresponding area of the circle. Okay. Uh, given is a suitable algorithm for that problem. Step 1. Initialize the value of R to 1. 
and the value of pi to 3.1416. So if I'm going to draw a um, flowchart for that, so I have start, S na lang lagay ko. Next, initialize. Initialization is a process. So R is equal to 1. And then pi, by the way, R is a variable. And pi, pi, is another variable. You are just equating a value for this variable. Okay? You are just putting some values on this variable. So that's now our step one. Step two, compute the area by multiplying pi by the square of R. So parang ito lang yung ginawa natin kanina. So sabi, compute the area. by multiplying pi by the square of the radius. Okay. Step three, print out the value of R and the computed area. Or print out. Ibig sabihin, output na yan. So print. Diretso na, di ba? Kung mapapansin nyo, straightforward. Kung ano yung step 1, yun yung ilalagay natin sa flowchart. Uh, dahil print out yan, so output symbol. Print R and then area. Okay, that's step 3. Step 4, increment the value of R by 1. So another symbol of processing symbol. Increment by 1 daw that means R is equal to R plus 1. Next, step 5. Test if R is less than or equal to 5. Now, test na natin kung ano yung value ng R natin. Test. Ibig sabihin, decision symbol. Um, that will be R. Is it uh, less than or equal to Five. Okay. Question yan. May question mark yan. So, pag yes, ang sabi dito, if it is less than or equal to five, loop back and repeat step two to five. Ano yung step two to five? Compute the area. So, kapag yes daw, balik tayo raw sa step two. Compute natin yung yan. So, paulit-ulit na yan. Pag no, stop. Pag no, stop. Please take note that kailangan yung lagyan ng sagot dito. Ah. Kasi question mark ang tanong natin dito. Pag yes, kailangan natin ng indicator na dito ang direction pag yes at dito ang direction kapag ka no ang sagot. Okay? Well, this is my algorithm. Uh, this is my flowchart basing on the steps of our you know uh, algorithm but let's see if we have the same uh, flowchart from the book so and then start yan sabi dito sa kanina initialize yan initialize the value of the radius and the pi sir saan ang galing yung r equals 1 naka-indicate yan di ba sa problem natin so sabi dito starting with r equals 1 and of course, pi, we know that. We just initialize these variables. Next, compute the area of pi and uh, of the area, I should say, of the circle. Then print. And of course, increment the radius by 1. So r equals r plus 1. Paano nagnyaring incremento? Okay, r is equal to r plus 1. What will be the value of r? The value of R is equal to R. Ano ba yung value ng R? Kan R? Uh, we have to trace back. What is the last value of R? And tracing it back, the last value is the initial value, which is equal to 1. So 1 plus 1 will be 2. Then is R is less than or equal to 5? Pag yes, okay. Balik tayo dito. Pag no, tapos na. Okay, so that is now our flowchart. So screenshot yun na lang yung mga problem and then yung ating um, solution to the problem.
So that is now the example. We have another example. Medyo madugo ito. Given a set of five numbers that include both positive and negative data values. So meron ka five numbers including both positive and negative. So we're going to draw a flowchart to read in these values one at a time. Ibig sabihin, meron ka ng initial values <clears throat> and you're going to read them one by one. Count the number of positive values. Bibilangin natin yung positive values and that includes zero. And the number of negative values found in the set. After the required values are determined, print out these counted values. So the suitable algorithms are here. Step one. Yan, basahin nyo na. Okay, post nyo muna tong video para basahin. And the flowchart will be start. Okay, may counter tayo. Bibilangan natin kung ilan ang negative, ilan ang positive. Meron kang kasing five numbers. Bibilangin mo dito sa five na doon, ilan bang negative, ilan bang positive. By the way, dun sa positive, kasama ang zero. Naka-indicate dun sa problem. Okay. Now, we're going to read the number. This NO here is the number, okay? Re meaning, it will come from the keyboard. So, input symbol. Pal parallelogram. Then, is the number less than zero? If yes, meaning, you're going to add one to the negative. Counter. This is N neg counter. So, N neg is equal to N neg plus one. Ano yung N neg kanina? Zero. Then plus 1, so magiging 1 na yung n neg pag less than 0. And then you're going to evaluate, uh, count how many negative and how many positive. So nagkaroon na tayo ng 1 dito sa n neg natin plus pos positive 0 pa rin. Kasi ang in-enter pa lang naman natin ay negative 2 for example. Di ba? Negative 2. Okay, so next is n val equals 5. No. Bakit no? Kasi nga, iisa pa lang i-enter natin. Dapat 5 yung i-enter natin number. Okay, go to A. Yan. Pag no, bupunta ro tayo dito. Pag yes, we're going to print n val, n neg, n post, and then stop. Ngayon, if, if the number that we enter is not less than 0, ibig sabihin positive siya. <coughs> Ito naman ang gagawin niya. Katulad lang ng n neg. So, ganun lang din. Kaya uh, magpa-plus lang tayo sa counter natin na n post. Then, i-add ulit natin yung n neg at n post natin. At bibilangan niya kung ilan yung uh, in-enter na natin. So, let's say for example, eh, uh, negative 2, 1, 0, 5, negative 3. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag ito in-enter natin, ang bibilangan niya... Oh, sundan nyo na. Sundan nyo yung flow. Diba? Start tayo. N neg equals 0. N, neg, uh, N plus equals 0. Read number, negative 2. So, less than 0. Yes, punta tayo dito. So, may plus 1 na tayo sa N neg. Plus 1 na tayo. And then, uh, N val will be 1 plus 0. Is it equal to 5? No. Balik tayo. Read number ulit. 1 naman ang i-enter natin. Is it less than 0? No. So, ibig sabihin, n post will be n post, n post plus 1. Ilan yung n post natin kanina? 0 pa lang. So, magiging 1 na yung n post natin. Punta tayo sa B. Yan. B dito. So, magkakaroon tayo ng 1 plus 1. Ilan, ano yung last value ng n-neg natin? 1. Yung n post natin? 1. So, magiging 2. Yung n val natin magiging kanina 1, naging 2 na ngayon. Kasi nga, dalawa na yung in-enter natin. Okay, is it equal to 5? Is n val equal to 5? No pa rin kasi dadalawa pa lang, 2 pa lang. So no, balik tayo sa A, read number. Oops. Uh, 0. Is it less than 0? No. So plus 1 ulit dito. Magiging 2 na ang ating n post. Babalik sa B. So magbibilang ulit tayo ng in-enter natin. Ilan na ang negative, ilan na ang positive. Dalawa na sa positive. Yung 1 tsaka 0. 
So hanggang mabasa niya itong limang values na to. So kapag ka nabasa niya ng negative 3, uh, n val is equal to 5, yes. Ipiprint na natin yung n val natin, yung n nag tsaka n pos natin. So that is now our example number 2. Erase na natin. May screenshot and study the flowchart. Okay, now on the steps in loop control. Initialization, huwag natin kakalimutan yan. Kasi nga, ang counter natin guys, initialization. Kailangan natin ng initialization. <clears throat> and then, uh, sometimes we initialize it to zero. Katulad nung n neg natin. Kasi nagsisimula tayo sa wala. Or one, katulad nung sa radius natin. Nag-start tayo sa radius equals one. So yun yung mga example ng counter natin. Na nagsimula sa zero tsaka or one. Then we have the test for limit conditions. What is the limit condition? Uh, in our first example, we said that uh, we compute the area of circle from radius equals 1 until radius equals 5. So the radius starts from 1 and increase and it is being incre incremented, uh, increased by 1. Uh, uh, I mean, the area, the, the next radius will be 1 plus the previous, okay? 1 greater than the previous value. So, nagpa plus 1 siya until radius equals 5. So, yung next example naman natin kanina, na n neg. So, we will enter, we will count the number of numbers we have entered. Ilang number ba? Ilang, na, ilang set ng number ang i-enter natin? So, hanggang 5 lang din. And of course, incrementation. We add 1 to the, the counter after the loop is executed. So, that is now the steps in loop control. Initialization, test for limit condition, and then incrementation. Okay, for your exercise, I want you to uh, create a flowchart. You screenshot the problem. There is now the initialization. <clears throat> and this will be your first activity to be submitted today. Um, until 7.30 in the evening today. Okay, Monday. Screenshot and then this will be per group. Okay. Gawa kayo ng flowchart. Ilagay nyo sa... Uh, siguro sa ano na lang sa Microsoft Word pagkatapos i-save nyo as PDF okay PDF dapat ulitin ko ha PDF ang i-upload nyo PDF kapag ka Microsoft Word ang na-upload nyo automatic zero okay <coughs> and please take note <coughs> that since this is a group work isa lang yung i-upload ninyo Okay, isa lang ang i-upload ninyong file. Para pareho ang i-upload namin, sir? Yes, isang file lang, pero kailangan nyo mag-upload individually. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is now the exercise problem. Okay, so stop sharing. Okay, so that is so far the first three lessons that we have discussed still um, we're here in our recorded video again um, by the way i want you to uh, type in on the comment section your attendance following the format that we have before that is code underscore last name underscore date underscore time uh, log in log in time okay so log in yan na ulitin natin please log in yan log in for example, code 265 ka, underscore, orita, underscore, or in this, sige, space na lang. Space, date, 
November 22, 2021, and log in space 1.30 p.m. So, pag log out, ganun din, 2.66, code mo, Urita, November 22, 2021, log out. No need for the time. Okay? So, please follow this one. And now, let's proceed to the next one. Next topic, we have lesson number 25, loops and trailers. So loop pa rin tayo, okay? The only difference of loops and counters and loops and trailers will be the trailer. <laughs> okay. What is this trailer? Trailer is a special value. Um, it's like if you encounter this certain value, you stop the loop. For example... Pagka meron kang pinabasa, okay? Or, for example, in real life situation, kapag ka ang time natin ay alas 6 na, stop na. Parang ganun, stop the work. Yun yung trailer mo. Okay? This is some kind of unique value. Uh, but in our flowchart, a unique value, a trailer is a unique value outside the range of data values. Let's say, for example, you will read positive values. But if you encounter a negative value, you stop the loop. Kasi you're only accepting positive value. And it will stop if it is if you receive a value which is outside the range. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi natin. So let's have an example. You draw a flowchart. Okay, basahin natin yan. Draw a flowchart to read and print as print out a student name and his year in college to indicate the year of a student use one for first year two three four for second third fourth respectively the flowchart should be able to process and count an unknown number of student records unknown number ibig sabihin ilang student record hindi mo alam unknown and at the end of the data file, assign a sentinel data value of 9. Ibig sabihin, pag tapos na yung um, pag-record mo ng student, wala ka nang record eh. So, i-enter mo na lang 9. Parang ganun. Assign a sentinel value of 9 or any unique value outside the given range. Ano ba yung given, given range natin? 1, 2, 4. Di ba? That's the range. Dapat ang i-enter lang natin ay 1, 2, 3, 4. To the year of a fictitious student to indicate the end of file. When this is read, stop all operations and print out the number of students processed and counted before the sentinel data value was encountered. Ilan daw yung nabilang natin, na process tsaka nabilang before we encounter this sentinel data value. Also, print out the total number of students in each year of classification. Ilan ang nabasa natin sa first year? Ilan ang second year, third year, and fourth year? So, yun yung ating problem. So, ulitin natin ha. Draw a flowchart to read and print out a student name and his year in college. To indicate the year, use 1, 2, 3, 4. The flowchart should be able to process an unknown number of student records. Process and count. Okay? Unknown number of student records. The end of the data file, assign a data value, sentinel data value, to the year of a fictitious student to indicate the end of file. When this is read, stop all operations and print out. Ano yung print out natin? The number of students processed and counted before the sentinel data value was encountered. We also print the total number of students in each year, meaning ilan ang first year, ilan ang second year, third year, and fourth year. And we have here now the flowchart. Okay, so we have here counters, N1, N2, N3, N4, N1Y for first year, 
N2Y for second year, N3Y for third year, and N4Y for fourth year. So counters itong mga to guys. Ha? Meaning bibilangin natin nila ng first year, second, third, and fourth. That's why they are initialized to zero. Okay, so we are going to count. The next one is to read the name and year. No, input, input symbol. Is year equals nine? No. Year minus two. Is it equal? Is it less than zero, or equal to zero, or greater than zero? So tatlo na yung pupunta niya. So decision symbol, okay? Decision symbol. Ibig sabihin, tatlo ang pwedeng maging output. If we subtract year minus 2. Um, saan natin kukunin yun? Dito, you read the name and year. So let's say for example, si Brian. Okay? Read the name and the year. 4, for example. Is year equals 9? So no. So punta ka dito. Year minus 2. Ano year minus 2? 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2. Is it less than 0? No. Is it equal to 0? No. Is it greater, uh, greater than 0? Yes. So pupunta ka dito. Sa pababa. And then year minus 3 ulit. Year minus 3. That will be 4 minus 3. Is it greater than 0? Or is it less than or equal to 0? So 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. So that's greater than 0. Kaya ka pupunta dito. Sa counter na to. So N4Y is equal to N4Y plus 1. So ibig sabihin may plus 1 na yung N4Y mo. Okay? So nag plus 1 ka. Tama kasi 4 tier yung in-enter mo. And babalik ka sa B. Sir, saan yung B na yan? Dito ba na B? O dito ba na B? O dito ba na B? So ang dami niyang pupuntang B. Pero take note, tandaan niyo yung ating description ng arrowhead. Sabi natin, kapag ka walang arrowhead, walang arrowhead dito, walang arrowhead dito, so saan siya pupunta? Ibig sabihin, going to the left. Punta natin, walang arrowhead dito, ibig sabihin, dito siya, di ba? Walang arrowhead pataas, ibig sabihin pababa siya. Ito, walang arrowhead. Walang arrowhead pa dito, ibig sabihin dito siya, di ba? So meaning dito siya pupunta. Dito siya pupunta na B. <clears throat> so from this from this going to B, meaning that B is going here. Okay? 'Yun yung ibig sabihin noon. Kaya nilalagyan natin ng small circle. <coughs> okay. Anong gagawin natin dito? <coughs> Akyat ba siya? Hindi. Wala siyang arrow dito. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin, pababa siya. So, we, we count the total. N1, N2, N3, plus N4. So, zero pa, zero pa lang naman yung ating N1. Zero yung N2, N3, zero din. N4, 1. So, ipiprint natin yung name ni Brian. Tsaka yung year, which is 4. And then pupunta tayo sa A. Saan kaya itong A na to? Saan siya pupunta? Siyempre, isa lang naman ang A dito yan. We say, magbabasa ulit tayo ng name and year. Di ba naman? Si SB naman. For example, SB. Then 2. So second year si SB. Is year equals 9? No ulit. And then year minus 2. That's 2 minus 2. Is it greater than 0? No. Uh, less than 0 pala to. Is it greater than 0? No. It is, is it equal to 0? Yes. Kaya ang gagawin mo naman dito sa counter ng second year. Kaya N2Y is equal to N2Y plus 1. Magpa plus 1 ka ngayon sa N2Y. Okay. Kasi 2 naman yung in-enter mo. So tama lang. Punta ka ulit sa B. <coughs> Punta ka ulit sa B. So ito total. Ilan na yung in-enter natin? Isang 2 tsaka isang 4. Wala pa sa 1 at 3. So, i-print muna natin si SB and then the year. But then, balik ulit tayo sa A. So, sabihin natin, ang in-enter natin na name ay bro. 
uh, year-nya 9. Is year equals 9? Yes. Okay. Tapos na. Mag-end na tayo. Kasi na-meet mo na yung ating sentinel data value na 9. Na in-enter mo eh. So, ito na yung fictitious na student. Okay? So, that is... Ganon din pagka nag-enter ka ng 1, is year, uh, year minus 2, that's less than 0. So, dito siya magpa-plus 1. Okay? Kapag ka, ano pa, 3 naman. Year, uh, third year. So, is it equal to 9? No. Year minus 2, that's 3 minus 2. Is that less than 0? No. Is that equal 0? No. 3 minus 2 is greater than 0 because 3 minus is 1. So 1 is greater than 0. So pupunta siya dito. So 3 minus 3, is it greater than 0? No. Is it less than or equal to 0? Yes. So may plus 1 ka ngayon sa uh, 3, year 3. So B, ganun ulit. Magpa plus 1 ka sa N1, N2, N3. So ganun lang. Ipiprint lang yung mga in-enter mo. So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4. So, dapat ang total natin ay dito. Total will be 4. So, guys, it's only a matter of, you know, um, following the flow of the flowchart. So, I'm going to print screen this. Ah, no, no. I'm going to remove and I want you to print screen for you to try to run down I mean to follow this flowchart. Okay, so another uh, problem. I want you to screenshot this one. And then here is the corresponding flowchart. Okay, so pag-aralan nyo to. Okay, and that's the end of our lesson. Now, trust Tracing and testing. Uh, Iti-trace kasi natin ito. Iti-test natin kung tama. I want you to try to trace and test uh, this flowchart. Ibig sabihin, start. Now, I'm going to start ka dito. And then, counter equals zero. Read ABC. So, one. Sabihin natin, four. Three. 5, 3, 4, 5. Perimeter. I-add mo lang yan. Ilan yan? 7, 12. Is perimeter less than 0? No. Compute the, the S. S is equal to 12 divided by 2 is 6. Then compute the area. That would be 6 times 6 minus A, which is 4 times 6 minus 3. And then 6 minus 5. Get the square root. That is now the area. Is area equal 0? No. Then if no, print the a, print ABC, the perimeter, the S, and the area. Okay. Sorry for that. May tumawag. Okay. So that's tracing and testing. So that's now the loops and trailers. Okay. So I hope um, hindi pa kayo overload. Medyo overloading tong flowchart natin. That's why we'll end here and we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. So I hope guys na tuto kayo kahit paano. I want you to watch uh, this uh, this uh, video and uh, understand the flow chart. Okay? So again, tuloy na lang natin bukas. Um, please continue to read. And kung gusto Kung hindi pa kayo nagsasawa sa mukha ko, uh, continue to watch, replay, replay the video, and kita ka na lang ulit bukas. Sana makabalik na ako bukas. And so, we end with a closing prayer. And I want to share
guys. Siguro, uh, harap tayo ng prayer. Isa sa favorite prayer ko to eh. Serenity prayer. Okay. And I hope uh, you also keep this in your heart para, you know, Okay, wait lang. Medyo rap na. Ayan, share natin to. Screen natin. Wait lang ah. Okay, so... O yan, ito na nga lang. Ayan, serenity prayer. So once again, let's have a closing prayer. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Then I'm the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, guys. You may now leave. Kung wala na kayong gusto sabihin. Okay, so, ingat kayo. See you next time.